I'm in no mood for this. We all love fast food, but what if that same fast food didn't love you back? There are hits and there are misses, and here are 10 fast food items you should never order under any circumstances. I don't want it. Hey, complimentary meal, but I'm good, bro. I'm good. Outback's Bloomin' Onion. Onions have a lot of health benefits, it's true. But this appetizer from the famous steakhouse chain is a far cry from the root vegetable that you know and love. This particular entry has nothing to do with taste, as it's actually one of the more popular items for guests to order when they're dining at Outback. The real problem with the Bloomin' Onion comes from the price point and nutritional data. While the average onion is monumentally cheap, each unit costing less than a dollar, you'll be paying a pretty penny in terms of upcharge when it comes to this tasty appetizer. Not only that, but you'll be ingesting nearly your entire daily allotment of calories if you enjoy one by yourself. If the calorie count doesn't bother you, when you pair that with the amount of salt, sugar, and cholesterol that goes into this dish, you might want to reconsider purchasing one for the table next time you're dining at Outback Steakhouse. We don't have a bloomin' onion, we have a bloomin' pumpkin! Anything from Starbucks' secret menu. Keep it secret. If you spend enough time loitering around Starbucks, chances are you'll eventually hear the words secret menu whispered from the mouths of regulars. This menu consists of items that are one of a kind and aren't replicated often or are popular enough to find a home on the main menu. Anyone up for a vanilla Nutella Frappuccino? I need it! While these drinks may sound delicious, and we're sure most of them are, the baristas who work at Starbucks are literally begging people not to order them. I've never made so many frappuccinos in my entire life. These drinks come with complex ingredients, techniques, and sometimes limited supply. If you ordered a cinnamon toast crunch latte at your local Starbucks, chances are that they are the only store that's ever made that drink, and they aren't exactly keeping records of these coffee amalgamations. This means that your favorite secret menu item is going to be different across all stores and will even vary from barista to barista. This puts a tremendous strain on the hardworking people who make and serve your coffee on a daily basis. The best practice in this scenario is to understand how you can simply modify an existing menu item instead of walking up to the counter and demanding a chocolate fluffernutter swirl mocha. There are a ton of ingredients that Starbucks keeps in-house, and if you want to try a drink with a number of these unique ingredients, the best thing you can do is carefully and clearly instruct the barista on how to make one. Seriously, you need to stop it! This is a grande size! McDonald's Dipped Cones I created a vanilla ice cream pita covered in magic shell. Who doesn't love ice cream? Even with the growing number of people who are lactose intolerant, ice cream still remains one of the most popular dessert items in the world. It was only natural that the Golden Arches would branch out into this revenue stream, and now most locations worldwide serve ice cream in one form or another. That is, when the machines aren't down. One Oreo McFlurry. We don't have any anymore, and my thing is broken. Are you kidding? One of the more popular varieties varieties of ice cream sold at McDonald's stores is the chocolate-dipped cone. While this vanilla cone covered in a sheen of warm chocolate may sound dreamy, previous employees of the fast food chain are actually uncovering the nightmare that goes into its creation. The problem with this particular frozen treat comes from the conditions in which the chocolate is stored. According to one Reddit user who claims to have worked at the fast food chain, the chocolate is left out all day long, just waiting for that first dipped cone order of the day. Supposedly, the chocolate will often congeal, and instead of starting a new batch, many employees are satisfied with simply mixing this primordial soup of chocolate to break up the film and then dip the cone anyways. Not only that, but other former employees claim that there is no shortage of cross-contamination when it comes to an open vat of bubbling chocolate. Apparently, there's not much care when it comes to cleaning around the ice cream station, so you might be getting some cleaning byproducts in the open container of the cone topping. These things combined are enough to make us second guess ordering the chocolate dipped cone the next time we drive under the golden arches. Maybe it would be best if the ice cream machine just stayed broken. Thanks, bud. Wendy's Chili. We're having chili for dinner. 
Wendy's is an institution, there's no doubt about that. Since its inception in 1969, when Dave Thomas opened the first location in Columbus, Ohio, Wendy's has been serving up fast food favorites just a little bit different from the rest of the pack. This includes menu items like their fresh, never frozen square beef patties, seasonal salads, baked potatoes, and of course, their chili. I made some chili to enter into the contest. What contest? While there's nothing inherently wrong with the chili, one of the ingredients might give you pause to reconsider ordering it next time you're looking for a hot alternative to traditional fast food fare. It turns out that the beef in Wendy's chili is actually made from unused and unwanted burger patties. That's nasty. Meaning that today's chili could have been made with the hamburger patties from yesterday's service. While there's not necessarily anything wrong with this, the real question is how long are they stretching these ingredients? Burgers from a day ago comprise the chili of today, but then what happens when that chili isn't sold out? Naturally, Wendy's will try to save and reheat it the next day, meaning that you could be dining on some less than fresh burger meat the next time you order the chili. However, if you don't mind the fact that you could be dining on a burger that could be a few days old, then the chili shouldn't scare you too much. Panera Bread Pastries Let's see what all the moms eating soup at Panera Bread think. <laughs> Panera Bread burst onto the scene in 1987 under the name St. Louis Bread Company. Their focus was bringing lighter artisan fare to the fast food space, and for many years they thrived as an alternative to the greasy fast food restaurants that we're so used to in the USA. Donald's joins all Americans in this joyous welcome home. As a natural extension of their mostly wheat-based menu, Panera decided to start serving pastries in their stores, claiming that they were freshly baked every day. Well, after seeing what a few former employees have to say about this claim, we can confidently say that this is not necessarily the case. It turns out that many of the pastries, like coffee cakes and cupcakes, come to the store frozen. Employees are simply responsible for sticking them in a toaster in order to heat them up. While it's true that Panera is probably probably still better for you than the average fast food burger, some of these so-called fresh items are anything but. Most of the artisan breads served in store do manage to hold up to the freshness test, but the lesser known and least popular items still fall victim to the frozen food quandary. Maybe just stick with their soups and sandwiches next time you're eyeing that puff pastry in the front cabinet. Arby's Roast Beef Arby's, we have the meat. Around the turn of the century, a malicious rumor sprang up in regards to Arby's roast beef. People claimed that it wasn't actually beef at all and was actually made of certain imitation gels, pastes, and mystery ingredients. Arby's quality assurance team dispelled this rumor shortly after it sprang up, but the damage was already done, and people began to scrutinize the roast beef for all of its faults, even if it wasn't true that the food was made from some weird paste. It turns out that while this is, in fact, beef, there is something strange going on with the most popular item on Arby's menu. According to former employees and other sources within the fast food industry, Arby's roast beef comes pre-packaged in vacuum-sealed packs complete with a strangely salinated solution. People describe it as an innocuous grayish mass floating in some sort of gelatinous broth. It turns out that this gray meat is actually the famous roast beef before it's cut and made to order. The final steps involved in a roast beef sandwich involve cutting and warming the prepackaged roast before it's given to a customer. But this is a far cry from what people might expect from the king of meats. Oh, no way. He ate people it. People will eat anything. McDonald's filet of fish. Give me back that filet of fish. Pescatarians around the world just let out an audible gasp. The filet of fish was first introduced as an alternative to meat for Catholics during Lent. While it was more of an afterthought at the time, the filet of fish quickly rose in popularity as people began ordering it even when not constrained by religious restrictions. Unfortunately, this popular item is hiding a bit of a secret. Former employees of McDonald's say that the filet of fish that you're eating might not be as fresh as the chain claims. Even though it's a well 
liked item, it still plays second fiddle to the most popular food that McDonald's sells, burgers. This means that only a small number of filet fish sandwiches are prepped throughout the day, and depending on where your order falls throughout any given shift, you could be eating a filet fish that was prepared a long time ago. One, one fish? This isn't always the case when it comes to this unique sandwich, but unfortunately, there's no way to know whether or not you'll be playing filet of fish roulette when you order the item at your local McD's outlet. Chick fil A's grilled options. It's a wonderful day at Chick fil A. How am I serving today? All right, this is a robbery. Give me all the money in the register. My pleasure. This one comes with a bit of a caveat. While there's nothing inherently wrong with the grilled options from Chick-fil-A, former employees have exposed the chain for not abiding by cross-contamination guidelines. There are a rising number of people in the country have chosen to forego gluten, and as a result, they seek out grilled options as an alternative. However, when you order a grilled item at Chick-fil-A, chances are that it was prepared in a manner that would make it unfit for someone with severe gluten allergies. This comes from the nature of most of the food in their store being breaded and deep fried. If you're in doubt, be specific and ask employees for a glove change or other safety guidelines when preparing your grilled option. This may seem like a small bone to pick with one of the more reputable fast food restaurants, but carelessness when it comes to food allergies should be no joking matter. And for this reason, you should beware the grilled options at Chick-fil-A if a gluten-free alternative is your goal. Depression. It's always caused by gluten. Obesity, that's 100% gluten. Subway's oven roasted chicken and tuna. Subway sandwiches, dad's attempt at dinner. When it comes to freshness in the fast food space, Subway has always been lauded for their attempt at providing customers with something other than greasy fast food. Oh, I don't think so. Well, it turns out that Subway might be falling from grace, because in this entry, we're giving you two items to stay away from for the price of one. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. How altruistic of us, right? It turns out that the ever-popular oven-roasted chicken breast at Subway is actually boiled in a microwave. According to former employees of the chain, the chicken breast is anything but oven-roasted. And as a result, this makes their claim of fresh ingredients somewhat of a fib. Not only that, but some sources claim that the tuna salad manufactured at Subway is about 80% mayonnaise, making it anything but healthy. Couple this with the fact that since it's one of the least popular items, the chances that you're getting fresh product in the form of tuna salad are incredibly slim. Some employees claim that they saw tuna for sale that was well past the expiration date, meaning that not only is freshness out the window, but the opportunity for foodborne illness could be quite high. One Reddit user claims that Subway tuna is literal poison in a container and is always several days older than expiration. While you could do much worse in terms of nutrition, Subway is in no way free from the scrutiny that comes from its signature tagline. If you say we're eating fresh, you had better mean it, Subway. Fast food ice. <laughs> From McDonald's to Burger King, Taco Bell to Kentucky Fried Chicken, most of our favorite fast food places are going to offer you some kind of beverage with your meal. Often, this will come from a fountain machine behind the counter. Most of us prefer to have these beverages chilled, and as a result, ice machines across the nation are utilized to provide customers with just that. It turns out that many former employees of these fast food restaurants are claiming that ice machines very rarely, if ever, are cleaned, meaning that these machines are are a cesspool for mold and other less than savory byproducts. Numerous Reddit users assert that the amount of dead flies and fungus that they've seen in the bottom of these ice machines are enough to make your stomach turn. Unfortunately, many fast food locations are switching to self-serve fountain drink stations, meaning that the transparency of cleanliness is rising. However, there are still some who use the archaic chests of ice, and if these machines aren't cleaned after nearly every Every shift, you're simply asking for trouble. So the next time you're looking for a way to cool down your beverage, beware the dreaded ice machines that lay in the back of fast food stores everywhere. You'd be better off ordering your drinks without ice completely. Not only will you get more of the drink, but you'll be saving yourself from the chance of something unsanitary ending up in your fast food cup. There's a 
been a contamination. Wait, what? Thanks for sticking around. We've got more videos just for you. So stay right here and check one out.